What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. Episode 15, assuming my count is on. Uh, continuing along, though, we are starting from the lake-facing cliffs. And we're just going to head northeast, and there are some more tombstones that I want to drop down. They are over there. So there is a, a dungeon right here. I just like doing the, uh, the tombstone approach just to get to them a little bit sooner. Because otherwise you're running all the way around the area. Plus, from a continuity sense, this this makes more sense to me. Because we're, we're starting from, like, the bottom of the zone uh, and working our way north. Which I think is easier to keep track of, of everything and stuff that you could miss. Make sure you land on this. That's that's a high enough jump you could die. Probably, maybe. A lot of people have been bringing it up, like, hey, you can use the stones. But yeah, as a reminder, I'm not going to jump off my my horse every single time. So just look for the jellyfish when you see them. Here we are. Like I said just barely south of that. I'm gonna head on in. And this is Stillwater Cave. Now, uh, you should have picked up the thing for the neutralizing boluses. Now would be a good time to have a couple of these on hand because this is a poison cave. As a reminder, you get this, if I remember, the exact merchant, and this is just my my guess, uh, I believe it's the merchant that's right here, right past the coastal cave that's like under that overhang. But you can always just search neutralizing boluses and find them, but anyway, head on into the cave. Um, we're not going to kill everything that's in here, because there's some really annoying enemies that Honestly, don't even really drop a lot of runes, so instead we're going to be focusing on hitting the main stuff, uh, which is largely staying up. So you can see down there, there's a bunch of stuff, and there's some poison bloom that you can get down there. Uh, so if you if you feel like doing a, a sprint through the poison, by all means, go for it. But uh, a lot of that stuff, you know, like the stuff we're picking up right now, the cave moss and all that, that'll always respawn. But I like to stay up top so that we can take out these poison mages. Run and jump to get across that one. Now we're going to go into this portion first. Should be some bats waiting for us that'll pop out. Also get crystal cave moss here, which is worth pointing out because uh, you're going to need that to craft some of the, the later stuff. Let's go. I have the most of you. Uh, with the bats, as always. Hit him with a dagger. Oh no, I rolled through poison. I guess you didn't get hit. There's the sage gear. And poison isn't a huge concern. I mean, it, it'll get you eventually, but the bigger problem is rot, which up until now, you probably haven't had to deal with rot. Well, you're not dead. Some golden runes, got the armor, got the serpent arrows. We're looking good. Kill another mushroom man. Poison mage, whatever you want to call them. Uh, now there should be... Yeah, there's a piece of loot right there. And what you would have to do is... If you want to get... I'll just get it. I'll show you what, what to do. So, grab the golden rune. And just run. And then just haul ass back. And we're going to round the corner... We're going to stay to the left again. You can see more bats. Okay. And now we jump another gap. Don't believe there's any other 
thing is down in the poison area. I mean, you have the uh, the poison bloom, of course, but those aren't really needed. Yeah, we're going to continue through, and we're going to fight a clean rot knight. Uh, you can kill these guys if you want. It doesn't really matter. Probably better just to kill them before they start doing their little poison mist thing. Clean Rot's not too bad. I think for the most part, this guy's actually pretty easy. The only thing to look out for is when he blocks like that. He has a couple of unique attacks he can do. And he'll summon up a bunch of little spears on the ground, but... I mean, for the most part, you can see, we're just staying on this guy. He's just, uh... He's dying. There's the light spears I was talking about. But yeah, just go on, beat him down. He shouldn't be uh, a major threat. I'm gonna get you the Winged Sword Insignia, which is a pretty nice choice for dexterity builds. Uh, it's going to increase your attack power as you continue to attack. So, you know, if you're doing um, if you're doing dual curved swords or something like that, really good choice because you're gonna build up that bonus very quickly. If you're using like a great sword, I wouldn't recommend it because you're not really attacking. Uh, quickly enough like our character I wouldn't use it we're not attacking quickly enough uh, but from here after we've exited we can just warp right on over here to Lyernia Lakeshore that is just following the path down from Lake Facing Cliffs this is like the first you know the actual lake start um, we grab that back in our initial loop through here so in general anything we do like I'm not doing anything off camera so if there's something you're like how did I get that it means you haven't been following the episodes in order and you know not to sound like a dick, but I'm not gonna... There comes a point where I'm not gonna repeat every single thing. It's, you know, the assumption is that you're following the guide, not that you're starting at part 13 and then wondering why there's stuff you're missing. Uh, but anyway, let's pull up the map. There's a couple different things. Uh, so we're gonna be running along the cliff, and then right around here or so, there's gonna be a spirit swing. And that's gonna be the first thing we want, so let's go get that first. Easiest thing is just keep keep the cliff on your left hand side as you run along, and don't worry about anything else for now. Just looking there is the spirit spring. This is going to get you one of the legendary spells, which is something that you need for the platinum trophy. Uh, you're going to be fighting a little fire dude in here. Honestly, he's really easy. Like just go in. You should you should body this guy. Like he should he should absolutely just get torn apart. Anytime he tries casting, just smack him in the face. Uh, one unique thing to point out is flails can't be parried. This thing, just walk away from it, it'll sit still and explode. God, which I know you're like, oh, legendary incantation. Unfortunately, it's not very good. Um, it, it plays just like he used it. So most enemies, if they're chasing you, are going to be out of the range of it by the time it explodes. Uh, very expensive. Damage isn't even that high. Honestly, one of the most disappointing spells in the game, in my experience, especially considering the fact that it's a legendary. I had 
I remember getting that, and I was like, yo, legendary incantation. Oh my god, let's go. And it's just disappointing. Uh, so sacrificial twig, these are really useful at this point in the game. These will be, they'll basically shatter and disappear instead of runes. And I want to talk about how you use this a little bit. So I, I see a lot of people that the way they play with it is they go, oh, I don't want to lose my runes, and they put it on. And that is not how you should use it. In particular, this item gets lost in place of your runes, and it will also, it works on death. So what I mean by this is, let's say I'm running around right now with about 28,000 runes, and I die. My runes are on the ground. Now, if I'm desperate to get back to my runes, that is when I'm going to put this on. Because if I die while I'm running for those runes, for that big pile of 30,000, this gets sacrificed instead of that pile of runes disappearing. So it is much, much better to run around with a second talisman on and then use this while you try to make a sprint to retrieve your runes than just constantly running around on this just so you don't lose your runes. Um, you know, just food for thought. That's what I recommend. I know a lot of people that they just, I don't know. That's, that's the intended use in my experience. Because basically it's, it's like a, there's a specific trigger with death. Your, the, the runes don't disappear automatically when you die. The runes disappear when a, a, uh, a rune loss is triggered on death. And this item prevents that rune loss on death. So anyway, just fun fact for there. A uh, bunch of stuff we're about to hit though. So let's pull up the map and talk about it all. So we have Lascar Ruins right up here. Uh, this place can be a little bit tricky, but kind of in the, the northwestern part, um, there's going to be, well, there's going to be an academy warp. And then just, just northwest of that, right around there is going to be a little thing we can get, a little, a little spirit spell. Uh, after that, we're going to shoot over to here for a volcano manor NPC. After that, we are going to go over here for Grace, as well as Patches, assuming you didn't kill him, this is where he'll be next. Uh, those that have killed Patches, you've missed out on a couple weapons, it doesn't affect your Platinum. Uh, from there, we're going to work our way south to get to a Fire Monk camp that has a prayer book and a few other items. So, there are your markers. Now, the biggest thing to look out for in this area is there are a bunch of different... Uh, enemies that'll cast these little death bells and besides that there is one that can come up out of the center and the one that comes up out of the center is the most dangerous by far you don't need to really worry about killing these guys you can just run right through this if you want to kill them that's you know be my guest but just be be wary of the big one the big one uh he can catch you unaware and he can tear through your health fairly quickly i'm gonna show the big one spawning the last guy ruins grace. So right towards that central structure is where this guy is going to pop out. And that's where one of the teleporters is that gets us back to the church. You can see that's the big boy. Smith and three. And that's the guy that I wanted people to be wary of. Let's head on into here. You should be safe. I've never seen them follow me down. So here we get a goofy little utility item. It's the, uh, it's the same exact bell that the enemies in this area are using that summon the little wraiths that chase you around. So, I mean, if you want to use it, go for it. It costs a little bit of FP. Um, you know, in general, I think items like that are more just like you know, a fun little thing to mess around with rather than something that's actually incredibly useful, but... Run on over here, talk to this NPC. Uh, this is for the Volcano Manor questline. <clears throat> this is one of the routes that will get you a permanent invasion item. And in addition to that, it will get you access to some spells, some cool weapons, some cool armor. Um, you don't, you know, once again, none of it is platinum related. It's just a lot of cool stuff. So after we've talked to her, run on over to point number three. She just told us to get a necklace. We're going to we're gonna run and do all that. I'm always burning through the dialogue because I already know all the steps anyway. 
Oh, I saw a shiny there. Anyway, go on up here. Get rid of that marker. Grab this grace. We'll talk to Patches. Oh, what's me? I'm still in bit now. I might Patches import. So if you do the speaking of, he's going to talk about the girl that we just talked to. A um, couple different things to point out. We're going to definitely pick up Stone Sword Key. Uh, this one's good because you can get the Gold Pickled Foul Foot. So those of you that are obsessed with farming, uh, this will increase the amount of runes you can get. This is the recipe that you need to make it. This thing's interesting. Margit Shackle can be used to uh, bind Margit to the earth. Now we've already killed Margit. Um, but there's a time where this could come into effect later. Personally, I don't think it's worth it. It's 5,000 runes, and on top of that, it doesn't really, like, hold him down for, for too long. It's like a split second. So, I know a lot of people are like, well, what about, what about the shackle? Like, I just, I don't know. I don't think the shackle is worth using. Uh, in my testing, I, I found it just not, it just wasn't worth it, you know. It stops him for, like, a second. But anyway, head to the, the fourth marker that we made. And that's going to be the Fire Monk Camp, which has a few different items, um, and more importantly, a prayer book, which, unfortunately, I mean, the, the pyromancies are really, really poor this time around. Like, it's just really sad, you know, because I love pyromancy. Pyromancy is, is one of my favorite play styles, and uh, I was really hoping that the pyromancies were going to be good, and sadly, they're just, they're not. I think that they're some of the, out of all the incantations you can have, Pyromancies are some of the weakest. So, either way, I get the Fire Monk prayer book. Fire Spur me. And then some Dappled Cure meat. I believe that is it. Um, for that marker. We're going to turn in the prayer book and talk about it briefly. While we're here, we'll just grab this chest. As I mentioned, this is the uh, the Golden Needle. You need this to do any alterations on demigod clothing. Let's see something. I don't know if there's a difference between the needle and the, the, the tailoring tools. Hmm. There's one less us alter at the, the graces. Anyway, you give him the books. Let's talk about some spells. Uh, O-Flame is basically this game's version of Combustion. It's not very good. Kind of takes a while to go off damage. It's fairly low. Surge O-Flame. This has some decent finish potential. You just, like, shoot out a little fire. So if something is really low, you could use it to finish it off. Uh, also, kind of fun in PvP to, like, just, you know, walk at people and slowly torch them to get the final hit on them. Uh, but anyway, head back to the Scenic Isle here. This is where we're going to continue from. So from here, we're going to go northwest to this island. And we're going to head northeast for the shack. It's right around here. Uh, after that... Following the lake tower. North for the other. Yeah, then we go down here. Folly on the lake. And then we go here. And then... We head on out here. So there are, those are our markers. One, two, three, four, five. You can follow this thing if you want. It leads you to the sacred wolf cave. I'm gonna leave y'all there anyway. So a bunch of dudes here. We're just snagging this. It's gonna give you a dexterity boost. I've gotta kill these guys. And now we're heading over to number two, which is the prawn shack. Now on my let's play, I just killed this dude. Um, you should buy the necklace off of him. You don't want to kill him. But talk to him. He's gonna give you some some mouth anyway. Offered a deal. 
purchase by Raya's necklace. Thousand runes. All right. Things know your bloody eyes. After that, if you talk to him again, All right, then. I could be. he will sell you boiled prawns, which will boost physical damage negation. Um, a little bit later, he's going to move to a new spot and sell you even more prawns, uh, and he can be a summon. But the main reason we're buying it instead of just beating his ass is this guy is tied to one of the hidden endings. Now, let's briefly talk about this. So there are three trophies related to the end of the game. We have a Frenzy ending, we have a Stars ending, and then we have the Lord ending. Those are your three trophies. But besides those, the Lord ending has multiple hidden variations. We have, you know, the typical one, which is like the Lord. Um, and to keep this as vague as possible, there's one which involves curse. There's one which involves order. There's one which involves death. And then, of course, there's the, you know, the default Lord one. Uh, there may even be more. These aren't tied to secret bosses or secret achievements or anything like that. It just gives you neat alternate endings that you can get in this game. Uh you know, on your own. Just, you know, more stuff to discover, basically. Uh, but anyway, going through his quest line will... It's tied to the, the secret curse ending. Not him in particular, but he ties into the guy that does the curse ending. So, ultimately it doesn't matter, but I would leave him alive just because we get some, some armor from doing that quest. The general rule of thumb is to, you know, unless I explicitly tell you, yes, you can kill this NPC, you shouldn't kill an NPC. So we're getting folly on the lake, and now y'all get your first taste of a crazy lobster battle. I should probably spend my runes before doing this, but I'm not worried. I believe in myself. So head towards number four. And that's going to be another one of those little standing towers. Now there's a little piece of loot that we're going to grab there. Uh, and there's a bunch of sleeping lobsters there, but you'll notice that there's this one that's just nearby that is not with that group, and that's the lobster that we want. This lobster is not a lobster, or a crawfish, or whatever these things are supposed to be. It is a, it's one of those crazy monster things that we fought at the tomb, parading around as something it isn't. So once you get it, Pop a heal. You can see, now we have this boy showing up. Just stay away from that tower, because if all three of those those other lobsters get involved, you're going to have a really bad time. Big critical! Killing this guy will net you a larval tier, which is one of the consumables you need to respect your character stats in the game, which conveniently we unlock in this area. Jump up, grab the smithing stone, and we're good. Um, okay, we have one more node, and that is over at five, and this is the Rose Church. Now there's going to be a. Uh, I don't want to say it. it's not technically an invasion event, but like a battle that you're going to have to do here. This also relates to Vare side quest, which is a important one to do. Um, and this is going to give us our first real taste of like some PvP in just a moment. So go on and talk to him. Ah, you claim what? Tell him the fingers didn't seem right. Uh, my doubt. Words are true. I believe even words. That's the oh. He's gonna give you festering bloody fingers. Give it to try. And if it I've high. So you need to use three of these things. Now I know a lot of people are like, I don't like invasions. I don't, you know, I don't want to do invasions, and that's fine. But you're still gonna want to use three. Now you don't actually have to invade. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop that. And then when the invasion triggers, we can just immediately leave. You know, you don't have to fight somebody. If you want, try fighting somebody. Uh, keep in mind that if you are invading, 
you will uh, you'll lose any souls you're carrying on you if you die. So I'm gonna actually cancel that out for now. No, I didn't cancel it out. Hang on, let me go to uh, go to the multiplayer menu and uh, let's put this down. It should cancel out the invasion. No, it didn't. Oh well, whatever. It's active. I need to do it three times anyway. If I die, it cancels it out. But so walk in here to the Rose Church, pick up the cookbook. And here's a dude. Shouldn't be too hard to knock that guy out. Uh, besides him, let's see. Do, 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 do. Kill the dude, kill the golden ball northwest. So there's a couple balls around here. Uh, this area always has blood roses as well. Another blood rose farming spot. To be just northwest, there it is. go and that's blood flame blade it's a pretty decent uh, pretty decent incantation just take a quick look at it after dealing damage blood flame continues to build up the onset of blood loss for a very short time so basically you're getting like a small damage boost like you would with uh, with fire on your blade but it also has the potential to cause blood uh, from there we're just gonna head out here real fast just for a, a smithing item and then um, after that we're gonna we're gonna warp back on over to folly Right over here, finally on the lake. Oh, yeah, had on the notes. I might be able to fit all of them. We still have the crystallines and then the albanurix. Uh, might be able to fit them into this episode. Let's go ahead and pop that. I'm gonna see if I can get 3,000 rooms real fast. Enough for a level. More than enough. Um, we'll go ahead and try to pop that again. There we go. So you need to get... Aw. Oh, you need to have three separate invasions that go through before uh, you can continue this quest line. Now there are two different ways that you can get a, a early on ring or an early permanent invasion item and it's doing these invasions and he'll give you a permanent one or it's doing the volcano manor quest line so either of those will get you a, a permanent thing there's no difference between them it's just two different routes you can go um, but to continue his quest line which can get you to the lord of blood area sooner and get you access to one of the only bleed spells in the game you need to do these invasions so there's also some some upgrade mats in that zone um, getting access to it sooner rather than later is good. Man, these, these invasions are, are rough at the moment. Just realized the walkthrough character wasn't in the wasn't in the group. If you go there and you put FCB, you'll see other people that are following this walkthrough. In the community, you'll see their signs and messages and stuff more often. So it's not want to work. There we go, we finally got one. Now we're not gonna actually waste any time invading. I uh, I do you know, lots of PvP. Uh, Phantom Bloody Fingers, you get those when you invade. If you pop it, it's a repositioning tool. It's mainly so that, you know, in the, the beta we thought it was just to like disappear, but it's mainly, hey, if you spawn up on the cliff and you can't get to the host, you use that to spawn somewhere else. But anyway, after spawning in, just go to multiplayer, finger severer, and return to your own world. If you want to PvP, by all means, you know, try and kill people. PvP is a, a really fun part of the game. Um, you're only going to invade people that are doing co-op or that have popped the taunter's tongue, basically inviting invaders in. So, you know, keep keep in mind, uh, it's not just gonna... I think that there's there's definitely a bit of confusion uh, between things, so I wanna I'll talk about this. So this, this is the duelist's finger. You see those red signs? That is somebody that's saying, hey, I wanna fight somebody. I wanna, you know, I wanna 1v1. Uh, and typically, typically when people are, are doing the, 
Oh, they're right here. I should try fighting them. Why not? Let's just try. Uh, typically, when people put down red signs, that red sign means that they are... They're looking for a duel, which in general, duels mean no healing. You know. Uh, duels are just... They're, they're 1v1. forever immortalized in the walkthrough series now. I mean, typically I wouldn't. He was right there. He was right in front of me. I couldn't help myself. It was just like a, a budding just child waiting to be kicked off the swing set or something. I don't know. Had to, had to take him out. But yeah, so duelist's fingers, those are for duels. If you see one of those on the ground and you invite that person in, you know, Y'all shouldn't be healing. It's supposed to be a 1v1 fight to the death. If the other guy starts healing, then go ahead and heal. But general dueling etiquette is, hey, you know, we're not healing. Um, I'm talking about red flasks. I think blue flasks are fine because if mages run out of mana, they can't cast. I think wondrous physics are fine, but red heals are generally a no-no in duels. Now, invading, on the other hand, you're straight coming into somebody's game. Same as a home invasion, you know, you're sitting there at the kitchen table, you're eating your, your cereal in the morning, and someone else kicks open the front door and they decide they're gonna come in and attack you. There are no rules in invasions. There are none. If somebody is playing like an absolute scumbag, well, that's, that's the game. That is the game. Um, if they are healing, if they are, are jumping up on you, it's an invasion, bro. So, end of the day, anything goes in invasions. Do not expect players to bow. Do not expect players to not heal. You know, if, if an invader comes in and decides to drop you items, that's cool. But I want to reiterate that there are no rules in invasions. In fact, I would say like the only general etiquette for invasions is, you know, don't be a piece of shit that's cheating. Like, don't exploit you know, things that are glitched in the game. Don't use cheat engine to instant kill people because if you do that, you're just, you know, you're just a worthless bag of dicks. Um, and hopefully you get permanently banned off the game and then all your friends laugh at you because you can't get the game done with friends anymore because you were banned for being a mindless child that had to cheat to win. So yeah, obviously no cheats, but besides that, there ain't no rules and invasions, baby. You want to run in and just spam Dragon Breath? Do it. And hosts, it's an invasion. People are in there. They are trying to kill you. You don't need to bow. You don't need to play fair. So after you've done three, you can do this. Say, anoint me. He's going to give us a favor. For your final trial. Normally, this ritual would involve blood, since you are maidenless. Now, as for the maiden, it's going to take us a little bit of time to get them. There are a couple. There is one uh, right up here that we could go and do that, but we're not going to that area for quite a bit. There's also a teleporter right over here by the four belfries that'll take us to a place. We can get the maiden at the very start of the game. Either of those are fine, but we're not going to get to that for a bit, you know, because we still, you know, you've seen how much of the zone we've done. Uh, we still got to do, like, all of this, and we still got to do this whole central area, and we still got to do all of this stuff over here. There's a lot here. So, for now, that quest line is done. Uh, we're going to continue it a little bit later, um, and we're going to head over to Folly on the Lake. Let me see how much I have. I have the Crystallines, I have the Albanurix, I have a boss, Omen Killer, a Kate. Ah, Yeah, I think this seems like a good spot to wrap. Um, so yeah, keep in mind, if you don't like PvP, finger sever her out as soon as you do those invasions. But we're going to wrap things up here. I need to, to do more walkthrough prep and get some more notes ready to go. Definitely fit in a lot. Uh, but the next episode, we're going to do the Secret Village. 
we're going to get the first half of the secret medallion we need for the secret area. Uh, and then more than likely, we're going to clear this whole area. Get that, that whole thing and everything that's that's over there. With the exception of this, this little upper area, you can't actually do that right now. But so we'll get all of that. We'll swing through here, get the actual key you need for the academy. And then after that, we're going to work our way through Gate Town and, and we'll make it to the academy itself. So more coming your way. Stay tuned and I will catch you all then.